In this video, we're taking a look at the Voxel or Opal Insignia IntelliLux Matrix LED headlight. Let's see, I'm able to catch it on camera. Well, this used to be, or that used to be a full unit. I always wanted to see what it is or what's inside of it. So without too much introduction, they, these are the components that you will find inside of the Voxel Insignia or Opal Insignia IntelliLux LED Matrix Headlight. The overall picture, the overall view on what is inside, what powers it, what makes it tick is as follows. We have at the heart of these headlights, we have the Osram Oslon LED chips in total for all of these components. I counted 30 chips, 260 lumens each. I've done the average and the stuff. So we should be expecting 3000 lumens of light. Of course, these headlights are making use of the LED matrix technology. So they will be dividing the field of view of the driver in multiple blocks and using their electronic sensors and cameras, they are deciding which block, which square bit to power and when. Quite interesting things. Uh, Vauxhall is saying that these ones are best in class headlights. They might be right, but coming back to our assemblies, coming back to our headlight. We discussed the chip that is powering everything up. Let's focus on each and every individual component. I'm considering this the main unit. This will be the second one, and this is our cornering light. All of them you will see that are using exactly the same chips, LED chips. The optics will be a little bit different. And this kind of summary. On or in this assembly, we will have a four chip, a big Oslon light unit. We can power this or the electronics are able to power that chip independently of the other ones. After that, we have two groups of four, but these ones are connected in series, if I remember correctly. So we can control this separately. This will be separate. And after that, we have another group of two LEDs that are controlled separately. This leads me to think that for this unit, that unit, we have three different oh, three different ways of powering up um, and using the light. We move on to the next bit, which is this assembly. This one features for each and every lens. Let's take them apart a little bit. For every lens, we have eight LEDs. In the beginning, I was considering that both PCBs are perfectly symmetrical. Not really. They are different in their construction. However, the optics, um, the lenses are interchangeable. So these are exactly the same, but the PCB itself, it's a little bit different. The other one, the last one will be the cornering light two LED chips for that little bit. Here we have my attempt at reverse engineering, how we can power the things up. So maybe looking at these ones, maybe we would be able to retrofit them on a different vehicle. Understanding how we can power them up would in theory, allow us to fit this type of headlight on a car that doesn't have all the electronics for this headlight. And we could kind of hack it in the sense that we make a standard glow beam and with a separate switch, we go all lights on maximum high beam. That is a scenario. I'm not saying that it's the right thing to do or not, but 
might be a possibility by reverse engineering all of the stuff, all of the stuff that is in here. Quite a big assembly, well built. The majority of the components, the majority of the things in this headlight will be, so casing is uh, ZKW, the manufacturing, Opt or the electronics is this company, M-E-L-E-C-S. Those are the guys in charge with doing the electronics. The chips are Osram and some additional fans and some stuff, but those aren't like major components. I will show you how um, this has been assembled. I recorded it separately. And inside of it, you will see quite a very interesting construction. So we have the layers on multiple levels. We have specific cooling for our chips. They are quite well, well made. I'm tempted of saying that the Chinese alternatives that we're getting with only one chip with six little chips inside, those ones from a light, light output point of view, they don't stand a chance by comparison with these ones. But later tests will, uh, will help us in actually quantifying this. I've powered it separately. And in the back, we have something with B. The top bit, I counted the pins. So reverse engineering the stuff. Our chips, these Osram Oswan, they can handle up to one amp and their normal operating voltage, their forward voltage is three volts. So should you want to reverse engineer or should you want to test something, start first with three volts and one amp, do all of your pins, and after that increase the voltage. If you go with anything higher and you have only one LED, in this scenario, we need to use three volts because it's one LED per circuit. When we have two LEDs, we use six volts. If we have more, we double or depending on the number of the LEDs. For this main assembly, what I managed to, to find out based on that little pin, so if we place them both in the same format as over there. These two over here are responsible with, these two will be that big main four chip uh, LED assembly, 12 volts and one amp. After that, we followed with uh, this cluster or these two clusters of three LEDs each. So the total would be, because I'm having six, six times three, 18, one amp. This is what is needed to power that assembly. And after that, I've managed to find the two LEDs that are further down, something like that in this format. The two, those two LEDs will be powered up between those two pins with that voltage and that current. The circuit board itself has all sorts of craziness, some diodes, some capacitors. Maybe some of you guys that know even more electronics than me might understand and give me some feedback to, to understand exactly why they're using so many pins. Strangely enough, if we look at the casing in the inside, the missing pins or the pins that I couldn't find anything to power with, to power them with, they still have the cables. So I really believe that they're receiving some voltage or something is happening. Maybe those diodes are adding up some voltages. The people that really know electronics will be much, much uh, in a better position to help with these details. 
we discussed the main assembly. Quite interesting. Good optics. We have proper cooling. Nice assembly. Um, I don't know if I mentioned it, but I will say it one more time. These headlights are able to achieve adaptive, so left and right of the light beam, not in a mechanical manner, but by powering different cells, different LEDs. Quite a big improvement over the older headlights, which relied only on one light source and the movement of the assembly itself, the mechanical movement of the assembly. The only thing that is done mechanically in this headlight is the overall up and down balancing of the headlight. That is still mechanical. Besides that, everything is done by powering on and off different LEDs. Quite a big improvement. Main beam sorted. This interesting little cluster. I tried to power it and reverse engineer it. It is quite strange because my negative terminal always moves. You will see it in a vid video. I'll place it somewhere. When I move my uh, negative, I need to move it a little bit more and more and more and more. I'm also tempted based on just looking at the circuit. It might have some bits that are checking circuit in the uh, circuit continuity or circuit integrity again. People that are quite good at electronics might help me in understanding how this works a little bit better. I'm also curious, how would we be able to power all of them at the same time? That's a interesting bit. Quite interesting. I've powered them and I recorded on the wall. It's quite a precise pattern. It's a nice little square that will be illuminated based on each and every LED. Everybody can see it. It's quite self-explanatory, massive heat sink, this aluminum component. The last thing, quite well built. And again, I'm considering your cornering light will never be used extensively. But if we look at it, the heat sink that has been implemented for this is quite extensive. Besides the fact that the LED assembly, the board has a massive aluminium construction, quite solid. I'll be tempted to say many of the Chinese versions of lenses and stuff. They just use this and that's all. A lot of heat sink for a small amount of LED. If we look at this circuitry, it's hard for me to understand where I wouldn't expect that the manufacturer will place components on a board without using them. Also, in the connector, I have so many, I really have actual wires going in. So, I managed to make this one work by using voltage between pin 5 and 4, positive and negative 6 volts, 1 amp. However, taking into account all of those components and the fact that I'm getting, where am I? Here. I'm getting wires in all of the pins. I really believe that there is some other magic that is happening over here. So you guys that know electronics, explain to me what's happening. Overall, interesting design. Things are evolving quite fast. It's interesting to see such a thing on a, I would say, low cost car manufacturer or the technology and the light improvement that this type of technology is bringing along is quite consider considerable. And at this point in time, I'm kind of a BMW guy. BMW doesn't offer this type of technology, but Vauxhall is. So well done for Vauxhall. 
BMW needs to step up their game when it comes to headlight technology. Okay, I hope that the overall video was useful. There were some other interesting things. They have all sorts of, let's see if I'm able to show it to the camera. This crazy thing, I took it apart and it has quite a lot of electronics. Maybe it's a constant power source. Nope, I was able to pick it up the camera. That will, I will show some pictures with it maybe. Someone is reverse engineering it. Quite a lot of wires, like proper big amount of wires. All of those components. These ones, this little bit, this is going for my cornering light. Why do I need so many wires for the cornering light? The connectors, I'm expecting this to bring power to the headlight. And these are all of the command pins and craziness. Come on, little camera, pick it up. Well, you kind of get a hang of it, uh, an idea of this assembly. Interesting learning experience. Quite amazed to, to see these components. Overall, I hope that this video kind of helped you. Should you like it? Should you want to see more? Leave me a comment below. Tell me some news. Give me some insight if you are able to do that. Once again, I hope that this video was useful and you learned something interesting in this one. And I might be seeing you in a future video similar to this.